I've been told we are a little bit early, but I think we can slowly start in. Hello everyone, my name is Bartek Potka. I work at Google and I'm also Prometheus maintainer. And in the next five minutes, I will have a pleasure to share some all you need to know about what's new in the Prometheus project. As you know, Prometheus is a graduated CNCF project that is an all-in solution, end-to-end -end solution for your metrics and monitoring, right? With collection, instrumentation, storage, querying, and alerting. And there is a lot, of co a lot, a lot to cover the, this week because after seven years, this week we are releasing a new major version of Prometheus called Free Zero. So let's dive in. And you know there are many many things to discuss, but first thing that are is, is would you notice when you would install a new Prometheus version is a new refreshed UI, and you know it's faster, it's more lean, it's uh, more responsive, it feels and looks more modern. But there are also you know amazing features inside. Um, there is PromQL tree view and query explanation page, uh, and there is also a metric and label explorer. All of those will help you to really access, understand, and explore explore your metrics, but also from QL queries. So it's all built in into the new, new version enabled by default. To power this UI, we also have uh, worked together to release a new second version of the, you know, our metric streaming protocol called Remote Ride. So the 2.0 Remote Ride comes with more capabilities to essentially send more data along your samples, um, being metadata, you know, histograms, uh, and exemplars. But it, all do, it, it does it all by also making the protocol more reliable, especially for part, partial errors, and also more efficient thanks to the novel string interning mechanism. So enables more by costing less, which is amazing. So the next thing will get you excited if you are a fan of open telemetry and you want to really send uh, open telemetry traffic to Prometheus and really use the same open telemetry metric format. Um, for you, we kind of like, in the 3.0 version, we have a new OTLP receiver, which is improved, and it works well with out-of-order support in Prometheus, which we recommend to enabling because of the nature of OTLP, or generally metric pushes. And we also kind of recommend and give you best practice, but really configuration to attach certain resource attributes that we recommend uh, to, uh, to all your metrics. And maybe those verbose ones you put into a special target info label uh, metric that you can then join on the query, uh, PromQL query later. Um, but to really stay, um, you know, and, and for the best experience for using those amazing open telemetry semantic conventions, especially for metrics, we uh, shipped in 3.0 and UTF-8 uh, support for metric names and label names, and it both on storage and UI. And from 3.0, it's enabled. So it's super powerful because as a open telemetry user, you really want to use exactly the same format, exactly the same names um, as were introduced in a semantic convention and instrumentation. Um, keep in mind that you have to add quotes um, to your metric names or label names that uh, have previously invalid characters like dots, um, but it's pretty handy. And also, generally, UTF-8 enables much more if you are not non-English speaker, because you can kind of put uh, you know, different characters, like Chinese characters, into your metric, which is super powerful and you know, inclusive. And this is just a glimpse of what would change. Um, and, you know, but I also want you to be aware that we also make some small breaking changes and you know, I won't be going through all this list, of course, but um, the point that you, I want you to remember is that there are small breaking changes. Really, for a typical user, you wouldn't notice them. There are more on edge cases, but it simplifies and really improves the project um, So we make them. And there is like a full migration guide that you can follow uh, to understand those. But we love metric, metrics and numbers. So I went ahead, to, went ahead yesterday and really benchmarked um, different Prometheus versions, just to see a progress in terms of efficiency. And you know, I com compared with the version seven years ago, four years ago, and now. And it's pretty incredible. Like on the memory usage for the same exact uh, load, which is like around eight million series, um, we you know 2.0 version oomed on my machine, but then rest is literally gradually much better with like 3.0, you know, more than four times less memory usage than um, than the old 2.0 version. Um, and CPU has similar characteristic, which is super fabulous and really kudos to the Prometheus community and and all the contributors for making this happen. It's it's really beautiful. 
Um, but there is, we didn't you know, stop there. We still have a lot of stuff to do. Um, so join us if you want. Uh, we are improving our governance so it's easier and more accessible to really contribute and maintain Prometheus. We want to be the best open source, open telemetry backend for metrics. Um, we want to deliver a new version of the open metrics protocol, which uh, is now possible because this project moved to Prometheus under Prometheus uh, governance finally, so it's great. And we in innovate with uh, histograms. Um, for example, we extended them, so we will soon, it will be easier to replace classic histograms, and at least on the storage level for efficiency and, and, and really reliability. And there's much, much more. So if you like what you hear, join us on our further sessions. We have session tomorrow about remote write protocol and what it enables. We have a deep dive and also like some ask anything session uh, on Thursday. So come, ask questions, give us feedback. Uh, we would love to learn about your priorities and needs. And also, you know, uh, join our Slack channels and uh, blog posts, check our blog posts and social media. Thank you very much.